To create your cutting file in Illustrator, start by opening Illustrator and going to the new document window. On the far right hand side, change the measurement setting to centimeters and then input the size of your canvas. So we are going to use a landscape canvas and you can see the numbers change between portrait and landscape in the measurements box. So the width of your canvas should be no larger than 40 centimeters. So I'm going to use 38 centimeters and the height should be no larger than 30. So I'm going to use 28 centimeters. That means that I have a nice margin of error and I can move the laser around the print plate when I use the laser cutter. So remember, centimeters should be the measurements that you're using or millimeters if you prefer. Width should be 38 centimeters and the height should be 28 centimeters. Now the very important setting towards the bottom comes under advanced options, which you might not be able to see. If you can't see the advanced options, click the actual title and the menu will open. Make sure color mode is set to RGB. Do not use CMYK. So set the color mode to RGB color and then click create. Now you have your canvas ready to start making your cutting file. If I'm going to make a very basic lamp, I'm going to cut out four rectangles and two squares. So four sides and the two squares will be the top and the base. So to do that, I could use the line tool here, or I could use the rectangle tool. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool to make um, four simple sides. So click the rectangle tool and then click on your canvas. Don't click right in the corner. Give yourself a small margin of error, which will be important when you're positioning the laser with the laser cutter. So I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to draw um, one of the sides of my lamp. Now, I don't know what size this rectangle is at the moment, so I'm going to click on the Properties tab in the top right-hand side of the screen, and now I can see that the rectangle is 9.1722 centimeters wide and 16.22 centimeters high. So I'm going to change this width to 10 centimeters, and I'm going to change the height to 16 centimeters. And then I can press enter and you can see that the, uh, the rectangle was changing shape. And now I'm going to use the selection tool, which is in the very top left hand side, to just move this shape just away from that edge. There we go. Now, if you click off that, you can see that the color, the stroke color of the rectangle is black. That's not a cutting line. So now you need to click back on it to select it. Change the fill color to to none, so it's the white square with the red line through it, and change the stroke color to RGB red. To do that, click the stroke color, and if you aren't in this easel um, color mixer uh, screen already, you might be looking here in the swatches panel. So all you need to do is, I'll just pick red here, um, and then go to the color mixer and change the sliders and turn red up to maximum. So the red channel should be at 255 and I'll turn green down to zero and blue down to zero. And when I click back on the canvas now, you can see I've got an RGB red rectangle. Now I'm simply going to click on that path, hit Command C to copy, Command V to paste, and I'm just going to recreate that four times. Now you can see that this isn't going to fit on one piece of wood. So if I create the last side, the last fourth side, I'm going to have to rotate this around and move that further down. Now I'm, if I'm lucky, I might be able to fit my two um, base pieces. So let's try that. Use the rectangle tool again, or you can just copy one of the sides again. Maybe that's easier, so I'll just do that. I'll copy one of these sides. 
Um, I didn't even really need to rotate that. I could just um, change the size in the in the properties panel. I didn't need to rotate it. So with this um, side selected, where it says 16 centimeters in the top right hand corner, I can change that to 10 instead. And now I can move that over. Um, I can move that over and I have the base ready. I can copy that and paste it and I can just about fit all of my pieces for my lamp on one canvas. So I'll only need one piece of wood here. Obviously this is very simple so I don't have any like teeth cutouts or anything um, but you can see how I would um, lay out my, my lamp design. Now obviously um, but your lamp will be more detailed. So let's say I'm just going to put some stars on um, the lamp. So I'll put a, a star here. I'm going to cut out these stars. Um, so let me just copy and paste these around. So I'll put one there. Um, copy, paste again, and put one here. Let's make this a larger one, right? And now I can have these cut out shapes Obviously, if I want to engrave these stars, rather than cut them out, I'll change the stroke color to RGB blue. So that means clicking on the stroke color again, turning the red channel to zero, and turning the blue channel up to 255. And now if you click on the canvas, you can see I have a blue star, which I can just engrave. So I'm going to copy that. pop that on my design and you can see the pink lines show you when the uh, stars line up perfectly and I'm going to have one more which I would raster engrave I'll put that at the top and I'll turn the stroke color off this time and I'll change the fill color to black and that will be that very slow raster engrave process but try not to use this because it will take a long time to um, to cut your file using the laser cutter if you've got lots of uh, raster engraved shapes. And this will just be solid black on the surface of the material that you're cutting with. Um, so in reality, what I would do is I wouldn't draw that multiple times. I would just um, delete those sides that I've created um, and just copy and paste this one finished side. if all my sides were going to be the same, obviously. If your sides are, are different, um, you would maybe need to draw more than I have here. Place that further down at the bottom. There we go. So now you can see I have a complete cutting file uh, that's ready to go to the laser cutter. And if you need to make changes, um, make the changes before you go to the laser cutter and then open your file in K40 Whisperer um, and check that all of the colors, the RGB colors show up correctly. Um, if you open your file and you see all these lines um, as black, it means that you did not set your file to RGB blue, uh, RGB color uh, in the color mode setting, or you didn't change the colors with the color mixer to RGB red or RGB blue when you created your shapes. So now to save this file, um, so I can come back to it and make changes later, I'd hit File, Save As, and save it anywhere on your computer, give it an appropriate file name. So I'm just gonna call this LAMP, and you see the format is an Adobe Illustrator, so it's a .ai file, you hit Save. Um, and then when the Illustrator Options screen pops up, just click OK. Now you cannot use an AI file with the laser cutter. So you're going to have to export it or save it as an SVG file. So to do that, simply go back to File, Save As. You can leave the file name as LAMP or whatever you called it, but this time where it says Format, you need to change that to SVG. Not SVG compressed, just a simple SVG file. So you click that and you can see now where it says save as at the top, it says lamp.svg. So now you can hit um, the save button. When you get SVG options, simply click OK. 
and that's now saved to the folder um, that you selected on your computer. What you would have to do then is take that SVG file, copy and paste it onto a USB thumb drive, and then you can go to the laser cutter and start to cut your file.